where we are right now is just stunning and it's just it's great i think we're just going to talk so. <laughs> yeah, of course. so just here yeah is that all right nice perfect shooting it raw yes shooting it raw dean johnson Ran. Ran. yeah nice why don't we talk about where what we're looking at? Where where are we right now? Because this is audio, right? They're yeah. listening. So so what is this? This is um, the country park in Sai Kung, and it's right out the end. You know, it's as far as the road goes into the country park. So to me, it's a, a little bit of a frontier, and it's um, where the where the um, ferries leave to launch out to the islands and to yeah to the islands and other places around here mostly the islands so it's a frontier and it looks you can't see it but it around the corner it looks out to china so and it's got sharps peak which is isn't actually a mountain but it looks like a mountain yeah in the background and it's got country park yeah I, you know, thank you for, first of all, we're neighbors, so it's really good to sit across from each other to talk. I might speak a little bit loudly at you. Let me just make a photo right now, because it's going to be kind of fun. Uh, just a sort of self-portrait. And I'll make this really wide, so we don't need to worry about how we look. It'll just be a really wide shot. And... This. Can we cuddle or something? <laughs> One second. Look at that. <laughs> Bonkers! So good! I look like, I look like an Neighbors. idiot. <laughs> wow, the light's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. It's great. Cheers. Well, what's photography to you? Um, it's not been a, a huge thing. It's just a... For me, it, I'm like 50 years behind the rest of the world. It's just a record. It's just a record of where you've been. And... Um, yeah, it, and... It, I, I I haven't used it to be artistic, but it it's been it's it's something that catches you know these cl clicky little moments when you're in strange countries and home that um makes you smile when you see it again later on yeah, and happy. Dean Johnson, thank you so much. This is perfect. This is wicked. Uh, let's just look at the photographs that you that you've offered, mm. and um, so I think the first time the first time I met you was uh, hitchhiking, yeah. uh, and then you very graciously gave me a ride, and I thought oh, that's nice, a nice fellow, and then so you gave me a ride, and we talked, and uh, I just lived down the road from you. I've known you for a few years now, and then started this podcast, and then everybody who surfs said you have to talk to Dean. I'm like, yeah, yeah, the people I know who surf. Mm. You have to talk to Dean. I'm like, yeah, for sure, because you are definitely a person who loves the water. Well, I remember that's what we talked about when we hitched, and mm -hmm. I learned your story, mm -hmm. and it still plays in my mind mm. of being in Sri Lanka when the tsunami hit. Yeah. Being in the water. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And surviving. Yeah, and survival. No, no actually, I died. Yeah. But, uh, yeah okay. <laughs> You're looking pretty good. It's still. all animatronics. <laughs> yeah. The first photo yeah. is, okay, so it's called Secret Spot, Not So Secret Anymore. Hmm. And uh, what we see is, uh, I, okay, this is in Hong Kong, I believe? Yeah. yeah okay, it's in Hong Kong. Uh, so on the bottom left, we have two surfboards, one with a very nice sharp nose and one with a more rounded nose. They're both kind of propped on the ground and there are lots of rocks below, or they're, they're propped against the railing. You can see the rocks. And there's a little bit of surf. It's not so big. Was that, was that a good day for surfing? This or? is a good day for Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the background, I think that's an island. No, nah, but it looks like a, it's Koh Tong. It's Koh Tong. It's just out, yeah, out there about. Okay, okay. About, um, well, you're right. Is that, there's, is that Sharp Peak? Yeah, yeah. It's sharp side of the back. Yeah. Right, right. So you, just in the in the in the back, it's kind of faded because of the haze. Yeah. Um, the photograph ends up looking quite. Um, because it's overcast, it looks quite monochromatic. So there's not a lot of splash of color. There's a bit of white water, and there's one little what? I just love that. <laughs> love the description. Okay, of what, sure. well, yeah, what, just what, have what, to describe what it is. Yeah, you're doing well. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, there's nobody in the water, and there is actually a very nice 
barrel, I guess you could say? It's more a rolling, just a rolling wave, not quite a barrel. Okay. Some of them were, yeah, it's, it, it's a little bit of a cover-up sort of wave, yeah. Sure, sure. So why, why start the conversation with this photo? Well, f- for a start, you've lived here for a few years and you're um, guessing at where it is, but it's like right in front of us. It's, it's just around the corner and out about two kilometres. Amazing. Um, and that's what I've really um, found precious in, in this place. And what you're also seeing is sort of one of the best days of the year, even though it doesn't look like Hawaii or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but the most striking thing of that photograph is that there's no one out there. Yeah. If any sort of a wave of that form was anywhere else I've ever lived, there'd be anywhere from 10 to 30 people there. Sure. But here it's empty, it, and that's, again, something to be really admired about this place, it, it, from, from a surfer's perspective anyway. So, okay, from a surfer's perspective, because... Okay. I'm going to ask you a very loaded question. Mm. I asked you what f- photography means to you. Fine. What does surfing mean to you? A little bit more than photography. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's something I st- started um, over half a century ago at a place called Bondi Beach. And as a little kid on a rubber s- surf mat or surf plane, uh, it's just been something that I've done all my life for, as I said, half a century. Um, and I, I say this, I love my work as an educator, but it's basically what I do to get money to buy those surfboards that are leaning up against the railing there. Mm-hmm. Everything revolves around accessing, you know, things like that. Nothing like Hawaii, nothing deadly, but just something that uh, um, is rolling and nice and slightly empty. Mm. of people uh, so it means it means a lot it's uh yeah it's my balance piece it's my sanity piece mm-hmm. it it's, keeps me whole keeps me down well i've met a few people and i understand this idea of calling it aqua therapy as a way to offset the hectic life that is hong kong although you know this, your school your work is in Saikong, so it's still not full-on urban. Mm. But when you moved to Hong Kong, did you know there was this kind of surfing? Yeah, uh, I'd had I researched. I knew it wasn't going to be all, all time, but um, I knew there was surf here, and I knew this. I didn't know this break, but I knew there was surf out this way. So yeah, I'd pretty well researched it. You know, when I started doing international schools, I only applied to about. 40 worldwide that I knew would give me access to to surfing. Wow. So, so you said before something um, about the surfing th- therapy. therapy. The th- therapy piece is that it's something that you grab towards you and it's playing. It's, you know, when, you, when I first started going into Indonesia, I loved how they would talk to you and say you're going to play surfing and uh. and that's their description a really humble or or, or what their eyes are seeing description mm-hmm. and playing is is the therapy piece because adults don't play right but every surfer on this planet has the right to play because mm. what we do is play sure. and play as an educator is defined as something you do when you don't know what the outcome's going to be. Okay. That's why kids are so good at it. Right. Because they're not too worried about yeah. whether things go pear-shaped or not. Whereas right. us, as we get older, we stop inviting that unknowingness. Yeah. That surfing has always got an element of unknowingness. You don't know if you're going to get... Make it slam, have mm-hmm. fun. It, it's playing right. um, in that full sense of the world word. Yeah. Um, and that's what's the therapy... Uh-huh. Not about it in my mind. I'm all over it. Okay, so when I, going back to Sri Lanka, when I was learning how to surf, one of the guys who was there, you know, quite, if, you know, nobody knew. And, and, and it's like the night before the, the tsunami, he said, you know, every surfer's got a story of, you know, of the the wave that was too big, the whatever. And that was, yeah, so my story is, is the tsunami. But so... 
tell us a story about about the time when you went out on the water and it was humbling it was too big it was too like is there one or are there many you know, I remember a place where I lived out in the Pacific on a little island and you had to cross a coral reef, you know, like what's in front of us here, to get out to the waves beyond. And at different tides you'd paddle across that reef. But if the waves were really big, uh, you, you know, and so it pulls the water back. Yeah. So you'd be paddling across a reef and, a, you know, not giant, not what you visualise as being Hawaiian, but a, a scary sized wave, like double the size of us standing up sure. would be coming along pull all the water back and then all of a sudden you'd be on your surfboard on dry rocks just wow, sitting waiting. there <laughs> going and could do nothing but smile because right. you know that that thing's going to collapse onto you and try to um, t turn you into a piece of <laughs> sea junk or something but you know the thing that most surfers know because everyone lives to tell their story Mostly. Right. So, Mostly. Yeah. So it's, it's it, you know, I'm sure you didn't smile in your predicament, but... No. 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 But, but most of my situations have been smiling like, oh, you idiot, this is going to hurt. <laughs> you know, and, and, that, and that is almost fun as well. Right. N especially if you can sort of calculate in the moment that you're not going to die. Right. You might get a bit scratched up, the right. board's going to be, whatever. But, um, yeah... It, it's almost fun to be in those little strange moments. <laughs> so, have in have, have you been in Hong Kong? Uh, in Hong Kong, I've had one typhoon where it yeah. was, it was, it was, yeah, it was way too big for me, and it absolutely I, like one wave. I was living on Lantau. It was so big that I was just like, okay, this sucks. I'm done. So, has that happened where it just you thought, this is just not worth it, or no? Don't sort of feel it in Hong Kong because I, I haven't been, you know. We, where we live here in this park, yeah. we've got the keys to the kingdom here. When the typhoons are on, we can drive around the Saiwan. Mm -hmm. No one else can. Right. It's like a private kingdom road sure. around to a place. And that has been... We were talking about if you feel like you can't do it, but the only can't do it is there is because it's torrential rain and there's about a foot or two of water running across those mm. roads yeah. and it's oblivion down the other side. Right, right. So you're driving around there, again, having those moments, smiling to yourself going, this is possibly not the, <laughs> not the smartest. smartest move that you've made today. <laughs> but then you keep, the, and the car stalls and then for some reason the, the power steering gap, but then it comes back on again and so you smile and keep going. You're amazing. And then you go around there and then the same time was, no, no one was around there but I remember paddling out, and it was it, even when it's as big as Bali here, it doesn't try to s s rip your board shorts off you. Right. In Bali, at this size here of any typhoon I've been here, you get hit by those, and it, it's trying to rip your arms and legs off. But the ones here, even generated by our typhoons, they don't try and rip things off you. Okay. They look a little bit spooky or whatever but they yeah and i think it's because they're just not as top to bottom as what barley is breaking on a shallow reef right but yeah this same one was going popping through a, a biggish wave and um a giant light bulb hit me in the head <laughs> and it was and then it was just one of those moments again and cause i amused myself it was a light bulb moment out in this typhoon day and it's one of the bulbs off the squid boat sure. they take yeah. them off throw them in yeah. the sea put new ones in yeah and then in the same surf, a table, an upturned table. So yeah, you're surfing with refrigerators and yeah. up to you've know that you've done the yeah. upturned tables, yeah, yeah. giant light bulbs, all kinds of garbage yeah, for sure. For it's, sure, it's that's very funny. strange. That's very funny. Though. <laughs> and that's what's you know that's what's unique about the the, typh the typhoons here. You know, the first few weeks here, I, I went out at Sheko and it was bigger, but I just had one of big foam surfboards somebody lent me and I a well-known surfer here come out and he probably can't even remember but we paddled out to the bombora off the or the bommy off the back of 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 um Sheko, and it was sort of biggish but it was just really lovely how he said i've got your back you know Aww. and this is a person i'd never met before yeah, 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 and we're yeah, out yeah. there and uh, again it was a very smileable moment sure. you know, and like we weren't doing anything death defying yeah but we still uh, had that connection and Sweet. trying to catch these strange closing out things at Sheko. 
It's yeah. all fun. It's all playing. Let's let's be present. You're ta- hmm. you're talking about these moments where you're in the water and it's happening, and you're just like you're aware that maybe this isn't the smartest thing, but it's also really funny and hmm. also really great and perfect. And then here we are sitting on this concrete little pier thing. The tide's out. You can hear the birds, and the birds are going to be in the audio. Uh, we're in the golden hour. The sun is setting. There's no, you know, a few wispy clouds up. There's this golden light on the on the on the hills. Um, we're both kind of in that sweaty 31 degrees Celsius <laughs> kind of temperature. Before coming to record this, you're just like, give me a second. I just have to hop in the stream. So you hop into the stream, then you come back out, and then we sit down. And this is a perfect moment. <laughs> Linked with other perfect moments. Yeah. If. if if, like yeah, it is. Like because that's a, that's a, the podcast is this idea that every day, if life is a gift, how do we make the most of every second? And at the moment, like I'm looking at a, a crab, like a fiddler <laughs> crab over there with this big sort of colorful one cr- claw, and and I'm just sitting next to you talking about surfing. I'm just like, this is pretty amazing. Yeah, <laughs> this, this, this is this is. Almost as good therapy as what surfing is itself. I guess, yeah. I guess, yeah. It is. It's good for the soul. But we've engineered this moment, though, to yeah. a degree. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's crazy. We've been strategic about it. And, there you go. And um, that's how, you, yeah, it's up to us to try and link them to a degree. Yeah. You can't manufacture no. them. Sure. But you can... They can't be contrived. Well, you live out here. We're, yeah. We're contrived people. <laughs> we're yeah. contriving people. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Um, because... Yeah, we can do this every evening if we so wish. Sure, that's a good point. Yeah, I think I think a recurring theme that you know about you that I know is that you you always talk about how you engineer. So that means you you build, you manufacture, you, ma- you design, you manufacture, you create, you you assemble uh, the ingredients you need around surfing. Yeah, you putting thought into it um, every s- bit of a swim is for that next paddle when you've got to sort of fight for waves off a 13 year old teenager in <laughs> Australia everything yeah, is feeding back to it um, you know the skateboard riding is feeding back to or replacing surfing right right, when, right like today we could be out riding the skateboard down the hills and doing sure. turns and having that same feeling so it's yeah I, I, it's living a surfing life. I often, people go, oh, there's no surf in Hong Kong, but um, I always say, yeah, yeah, I'm having one of the best surf sections of my surfing life oh, that, I've wow. had, that I've had. And mm-hmm. people, and, you know, I, I sent you one of the photos we're not even up to, but people in Australia will go, yeah, it's like they d- don't believe you, which, yeah. is, which is even better. Yeah. You know, because they're... Send me a picture, and one of the other pictures you might call that's the sort of picture I'll send back to them right. because they want photographic proof, proof yeah, of yeah. this <laughs> surfing life, but they're not getting that. Um, they have to get, or well, they can't get on a plane, they'd have to like swim over at the moment. But yeah, right. people need to put be strategic about putting themselves into the same position. And right, it, okay, well, let's use that as a segue to the next photo because mm. why not? Uh, in this photograph, it's, uh, it's titled, When Someone Messages Me About the Surf. And in the photo, you've got, uh, I guess, now, are you wearing a coat or is that a, no, a it's cap? A wet, it's a wetsuit. It's a wetsuit. And a, uh, it's a wetsuit cap for winter here, yeah. Okay. So, uh, how cold is it outside, roughly? It's, it's, it's overkill for Hong Kong, but when you're bald like me, you, your hair mm. gives you a bit of warmth, so I... I like to wear a cap because then I can stay in the water for t- two hours or so. Right. The water range in Hong Kong is, you know, one of the widest ranges. In on temperature? Earth. Yeah, in temperature. It goes down to like 15 or so and yeah. then up to about 34 or so. Oh, so wow. there's a greater range in Hong Kong than I think a lot of other places okay. on Earth. So it, it's not cold, <clears> but... Um, um, it's def- if you want to stay in play for longer, yeah. you put a you put a you get yourself warm and sealed, sure, so sure. you can play longer. So in the photograph, so you it's a self portrait. You're standing so above your head is 
gray skies. There's a tree that's uh, half alive. Um, half of its leaves are gone. You're standing. Uh, you're kind of, you know, you're looking. You're, you're wearing your wetsuit. It's all black. And you're, you're behind you. There's just a little bit of water. You can just see the hints of the water. So why is this that when somebody messages me about the surf? So why is it to tell you about the surf or to ask you about the surf? To ask me about the surf. You know, I might have been communicating with someone back in Australia or someone in Hong Kong. And they'll say, what's the surf like today? And I'll say, it's okay. It's, mm. it's pretty good. And then the next message is always, send me a photo. <laughs> and that's the photo I always send them. Right. Because if they want to, they needed to get on their bike and get out here okay. as well. So I'm not going to send a photo. That alludes to what happens now. And the other photo, the secret spot's not so secret anymore. Mm -hmm. No one used to go out there 10 years ago. That I'm sorry for jumping photos. No, but it's, fine, it's fine. When we were on One Shack Pier, before I had my little plastic boat thing, um, we'd be catching speedboats or ferries out yeah. to Tap Moon. Yeah, yeah. And if other people turned up with surfboards, the friends that showed me that place, they used to make me hide behind pylons. We'd hide until those people went past because they were all going to Dalai Ah, okay, These okay. These were okay. old school guys, my right, age, right, who, right. and we tried to not tell everyone. We right. didn't get on our phones and message where we are going, yeah. you know, as we're eating our breakfast or whatever. Sure. We just got there, arranged the boat, hid from other humans, talk, kept, kept our lips really closed, and went out there and surfed three of us for the whole day. Right, right blissfully right whereas now the same place i'll be out there and and i see people turn up and the first thing they do is take a photo of the and then share it and send it to their friends yeah and then that's why now there's 15 or so people surfing right. in a place that used to have three or four people yeah and i'm you know i'm doing it myself now to talk to you about sure, it so sure. it's just around the, but no but nobody will know well, from the podcast the bubble is the bubble is burst <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's and and i'm moving and you're moving and i'm a selfish crap ah! you know? and it's like you well, said it you yeah, said it yeah. <laughs> but, but it, no the, it's now no it's no secret it was, never was a secret that pe people weren't prepared to, to, to do the mileage to get out there. Yeah. But now they know because they've seen, there's apps that tell us there's waves there. There's photos that friends are putting on, you know, WhatsApp groups. Yeah, yeah. So the knowledge is there. Right. It's, it's um, so people get out of bed and come. Right, right, which right. Which is fine, you know. So um, you're professionally, you're... Uh, Vice principal in a or what is it? What is how would you describe a professional? It was assistant principal and curriculum coordinator at this school in Sai Kung, but um, due to COVID, our, our numbers have gone down, yeah. So our budget bottom line got a bit tighter, yeah. So this year I've stepped back a bit, taken a pay cut, and um, I'm curriculum coordinator, and we're surviving without a, an assistant principal, got it. So have been for 10 years or so the assistant principal slash coordinator but this year just coordinator and it and then now i get fridays off right to go surfing, go for surfing so life guys. has tilted upwards in that yeah oh and something else you notice that you described the monochromatic this is all winter time right right this right. is why the skies are gray the yeah. trees have no leaves sure because this all only happens in winter yeah yeah so what do you do in the summer go to Bali <laughs> when COVID's not on. Right, right, right. But or when the, the I mean, I, I've heard many people talk about how, uh, you know, when the tide is up, you're, you're on your paddleboard. You're, you know, you're definitely on the water. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just getting ready for the next time right. that I can go surfing. Right, right, which right. I love every second of it. Mm -hmm. But my main aim, the main aim of the game is to be surfing. Wow. So all of that paddle boarding and swimming and being on the water for you know, each day mm -hmm. is about getting ready for that. Um, but yeah, it hasn't happened for a couple of years. So but look again, look where we are. So yeah. it hasn't been too hard to bear. Sure. Praying for, praying for typhoons. You're around kids. Your mentality and your mindset is a little bit non-unconventional in the sense of the conventional the idea is you know you go out you you get you make your life you do all this other thing it isn't to kind of shape it around surfing so that's unconventional to hear have you inspired a fraction of the kids that you work with to be 
to become young surfers? In Australia it used to happen more because we, you live in a beachside suburb in Australia, you surf. Yeah. You don't, some play rugby, some play soccer, but mostly you surf. Yeah. So if the kids knew their teacher surfed, yeah. that, that, they were out there. But then, you know, every Christmas you'd be getting presents from their dads who make fins right, or, right, or, right, or right. sell repair kits for surfboards. Nice. Everyone's sort of, everyone's following the party line yeah. in certain places where I've lived in Australia. But here, yeah, people c come in and come out. But there's, Hong Kong is a place of opportunity. So the young kids surf, you know, they play rugby, they they shop in and shop out. Yeah. I think it's young people these days, yeah. they don't sort of lock in on right, things so right, much. Right, right, right. But have I inspired, um, no, but more, more inspired sort of older, uh -huh. you know, like Chris, who you know. Yeah. I think you know Chris, yeah. Chris? Uh, I no. think I owe him like a thousand dollars. Do you? No, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> the guy, there's been different Wait, people. Who lives in... Uh... Oh yeah, he used to yeah, and he's yeah, got yeah, the little yeah. surf shop out so on, I know, yeah, okay. on Tap Moon out here. I, I want to talk about something. Um, right now we're talking and <clears throat> just to add a little bit of, of color and, and, and so, okay, so we can hear the, the, the audio, the, the birds are definitely bleeding into the audio, which is nice. But as we're talking, my view is of this exposed seabed, I guess, or, or, you know, the tide went out. And then, so, I don't know if you noticed, but right over there, you can see these small animals who, that they kind of seem to lift these two claws up into the air with, like, these little white paddles. And I, it's very strange because they're, like, lifting these white little things up to the sky. And it looks, oh, yeah. maybe they're baby crab trying to pick something out of the sky. Can you see that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So as we're talking, good, I can see all these you, little, tiny little crabs just kind of reaching for the sky or something. And off you go. Go check it out. Go check it out. They're really yeah, small. They're, they're tiny. Yeah, they're just tiny little crabs. They're, yeah, but it's cool how, they're, how their claws just seem to reach up to the sky. Well, they're grabbing the things that are biting us. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're grabbing the midges. Good for them. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, they're doing a good job. <laughs> oh, they're just doing this lovely Is this amazing? How come I've never noticed that before? <laughs> this is my little bit of mud. <laughs> this is yours. <laughs> this is my mud. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so... We, yeah, they are. They're still doing their... Is it amazing, they're though? They're doing it's their a, synchronized dance. It looks like a synchronized skirt. swim. It's amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they've definitely got swimmer's arms. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so using that as the segue, let's go over to the next photograph, which is so sweet. You're on a beach. Is this in Saikong? Yeah. Okay, so it's a perfect beach. Um, the sand is all very nice. Uh, and so on this small green uh, surfboard, wearing a sort of a... a black and red wetsuit is a kid who's probably about 10 I'd say 10 years old mm. uh, standing and you're you're kind of coaching him behind leaning on the on the sand you're kind of coaching pointing off into the water and he's kind of almost like you're telling him okay doing do this and sort of coaching him to kind of to fix his stance or whatever and um, we can't really even see the water because the majority of the photograph is just the, the sand, the sort of packed sand. Hmm. It looks overcast. Yep. The, the light is quite diffused. And so this one's called Be What You Want To Be In H in Hong Kong. Yeah. So, so, so you said inspire anyone. This is a young fella that, you know, one thing that I've always done in my life, I lived in Japan and on the water, on a beach in Japan. And Japanese people lived all around me and they're very, private but they you know they don't make friends too easily because they're so dedicated you're a friend for life they don't like oh. to easy friends okay so people um, adopt you or sort of give you space but I'd been surfing one day freezing snowing you know sleety sort of day in Japan in winter because that's when the surf and this little boy come in he just pushed in the door of my apartment, walked in and told me, said, teach me how to surf. Ha, this awesome. Little, like he was six years old, I say. And he's just graduated this year. And he said, do I inspire people? He's, you know, I've always had people like that. He, 
that people come and ask me so then I do it right. um, and I offer people lessons and I say that's for life but Kaisei was one this guy is another one he's the son of our counsellor at the school there and we always talk skateboards and, and he asked to come surfing uh-huh. but it, it was freezing it was like end of winter so it should have been warming up and he's as skinny as anything so it was a freezing day it was only us and his mum walked into Saiwan and what I'm saying today is what I say to everyone skateboarding right um, always look where you're going. Of course. <laughs> always look where you're going in life. And it's yeah. one of the most favorite things I get to say people to people when they're learning to surf. Yeah. Because everyone looks down at their feet. Yeah. And that's where you go. Right. And it's like when you learn to ride a bike. You're yeah. looking down at the pedals, so you run into trees or, exactly. or people my age. So, yeah, he's just getting that lesson. Nice. And he's grabbed a few lessons off me, and he's still quite passionate about it but mm. he's a, got his rugby he's got his skateboards he's got his other things yeah so he's not a full convert yet but it's still <laughs> he's in the he's in the team another sorry another piece of Go that is it. in hong kong i i remember meeting a guy a teacher uh, one of the assistant principals in our school and he says i'm the referee for the rugby sevens is it okay yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I was very impressed by that right he's right like just another some guy. Aussie like me, yeah, and yeah. he's the he's the lead referee. Okay. Um, in the rugby sevens, I was very, and he also was um, a guitar guitar player in a, a Pink Floyd cover band. <laughs> going, Here we are in Hong Kong, and I've learned it too. In Hong Kong, you come in as this person, but you fashion yourself into the person you want to be. It's, okay. We all sort of do it in Hong Kong, sure, because Hong Kong sort of lets you do it. Right. If, and here I've fashioned myself into a, a surf coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got learner boards and I've done lessons for years. In Australia, you've got to be an ex-world profession. Right, you know, right, 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 right. To, to be even considered as a surf coach. Sure. But Hong Kong, you can be that guy or that person. And I really love Hong Kong for that. It's also, the, it attracts a certain kind of person. You know, so already, yeah, these bugs are everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it attracts a certain kind of person who will, like, the kind of people who will leave their Australias and their Canadas and their Italy and their Denmarks, whatever, to come here. So it's kind of like within our little group of, of expats, there's that thing in our, blo- in our mentality or psyche to say, well, yeah, I can go there. I can invent yeah. myself, right? Maybe that's why Hong Kong is that kind of place because it attracts where we have that in common yeah yeah we've already taken ourselves out of the comfortable place and the routines and the ske- other schedules to yeah yeah i think so mm. uh, again i remember leaving australia years ago but oh, it was a few years before i left and i was in a pub in australia and there's two old guys sitting on a bench drinking their beers and leaning back against the wall. And when one of them got off the stool to go to the toilet, I saw that his head had sort of cut a groove in the wall of the, <laughs> of, of the pub. Because he sat there, for, and I remember thinking, I'm never going to live anywhere long enough to, to leave a groove in the wall. Yeah, to leave a dent, dent in, the, in the wall. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I know that's different to that. But yeah, I think some of us are not destined to sure. leave a dent in the wall. For, sure. So somebody who who listens to you have this passion that manifested and matured over time. So who brought you out surfing the first time, like when you were a kid? Uh, grandparents. They used to rent these big black surf planes in Bondi, and I was born in Bondi, so the grandparents used to take me down and, and I can I, I can still I'm seeing it now my first wave where I've just run up on the shore mm-hmm. on this thing with black thing with big yellow handles yeah. and like being hooked for life right and then other I had a dad took off but a stepdad had bought a, a, an old board for me and I remember persevering as about an eight nine or ten year old and catching a wave in a place when we're on holidays in in Australia and I'm going across a wave and there was a dolphin in the wave with me. There were certain things that have locked it in to say, I I need to do this as much as possible. Um, Sorry, I don't know if I answered the 
question. I don't know if I asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, there are certain things that are quite that are fairly hooking. Yeah. Let me just see. Uh, actually, of all things, Jessica just texted me saying uh, she wanted uh, she mm -hmm. might want to come up to to the water. Speaking of people who want to get some water therapy. Yeah, she needs it. Yeah. So you're, in this case, in this going back to this photograph, be what you want to be in H in, in Hong Kong. If I take you, and what okay, what emotions come up if I say to you, okay, um, I'm picking you up, I'm putting you on a plane, and I'm dropping you off in the middle of Saskatchewan, Canada, where there's no water for as far as you can see. What does that make you feel? Like there's no the the closest ocean is thousands of kilometers away. How yeah. do you feel? Well, I'm, uh, first thing I've got to try and get my head around is if there's snow that I can go snowboarding on. Oh, uh, there which you go. Possibly. Uh, there. no, flat. Oh, it's flat. It's Sorry, flat. That's, that's my knowledge of geography. <laughs> so that's not that. The, the, my next thought is that's not likely to, to happen. happen. Right. You right. Know, uh, I'm jumping all over the place, but my dad, my stepdad, drove trucks from one side of Australia to the other. So I spend a lot of my young time driving from one side across the de desert with him. in Australia with him oh wow keeping him awake and loving it you know it's so be it's as beautiful as this Hum it's yeah, just humongous. without the sea yeah, yeah 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 wow but yeah it's not where I want to be and all the rest of my life is you know, I sort of start to feel like I'm going to wither up and die if I go more than five kilometres inland. Uh -huh. But m my work puts me in there. I just got to make sure there's a swimming pool somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I've been inland, my wife, we like to tour. We've toured all around India. As long as there's rice paddies I can jump into or a stream that's run mm -hmm, down, mm -hmm, I can. Mm -hmm. I sort of ha have to be strategic yeah. and, and try and sort of make sure there's some water that I can jump into. But so they would be in Saskatchewan, but right, right, right. No, the, you'd find a solution for sure. Yeah. I wasn't trying to make you uncomfortable, but I was trying to feel like. Yeah, I'd be but, making excuses though not to go, possibly. Yeah, but you've you've but I I find it fascinating that you have such a clear sense of what's important to you, and to have that connection and and the, you know, I've met people who are who are surfers like in the sense that in your sense like in, in your case the the common the theme is this idea of being in the surf of riding a wave that's chasing you as you're falling with it and and that feeling right and so can that you try you you make it up on the road on a, on a on a on a skateboard so what's the fastest that you've gone on a skateboard I, I, probably 80k, I think 80k, because my watch measures all of this stuff. Okay. So it's 80k. Um, you know your heels, the heel yeah. coming down to your heels, yeah. like it's equivalent of an eight foot wave. Okay. But the heel going down the other side is a four to six foot wave. Okay. So that you know you can oh in terms surf. Oh, okay in it, terms of the the, the, the angle the, no just the feel of it like when oh. you're going down and go oh I could trip over and die on this like you could trip over and die when you're on a six to eight foot wave right whereas on the other side it's like oh this is so lovely just yeah, 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 yeah so this is a four to six foot wave that's not going to try and kill you that's on the other side of the hill there but the one coming down have you into, fallen no i haven't fallen down any of the and you know, i've been doing this for about three or four years yeah that's wood. i've seen you a bunch yeah yeah so no because and it's a, i mean look uh, it's the the to give people the scale so it's about 900 feet high in terms of elevation or say uh, about 350 meters um, but the the total descent is how long would you say I don't know uh, I do know it's about like two and a half K down so it's about oh a, wow I don't know if that's right two and a half minute run down the other side right and it's like potentially three minute run down the air because you can almost go up that little bit and down yeah. in the long shed yeah, so it's yeah, a nice yeah, yeah. long down your side of the hill so but that you're talking about you know the surface love the motion but i think it's more simple because i learn about occupational therapy i know kids some kids at school have to sit on a bouncy ball while they're doing their math thematics and bounce up yeah. bounce in their head off the yeah, room yeah. humans need different things right and some humans need to do that other humans need to sit on these sort of wobbly chairs there are other kids in our school because we cater for kids that right have you know 
we try to help them work out how their brains and bodies are feeling. Other kids have got like um, sticky tack in their hands and they're manipulating. Some are ripping Velcro off underneath. Everyone sort of okay. craves things that sort of bring them back to a point where they're feeling like in the groove or right. ready to learn or yeah. or not stressed and yeah and it's good to know that about yourself and and I know that about myself and I, I I've always tried to work it out but I'm honest it's just that back and forwards movement right that, that um I don't even know the right word for it just yeah, prob- just the, just the banking yeah. left and right for it's sure it's just that movement and it must be good for my brain because I'm sort of hyperactive and Okay. It just makes me sort of feel yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. No, I no, I got it. For yeah. hundred, you know, when I was a when I was a kid, till the age of about ten, so old enough, I would slam my head into the pillow as a means to go to sleep. Yeah. And so I just bang, bang, like hit and hit it hard. Yeah. And I can I've always kind of laughed about it thinking back because I can imagine my parents trying to go to bed and in the meantime their their kid is in his room me slamming the head hard and it must have sounded like a couple having sex next door you know and they're just like nope nobody's having sex it's just like 10 year old kid like putting himself to sleep I've read about that recently a lot of people do I used to do that okay awesome Um, it's not common but it's again a form of self-regulation yeah and it's not someone trying to Mm self-harm it's because we felt that made us feel good that sort of quietened our brain down sure sure do that yeah Um, i didn't know anything about masturbation so that was was good that was that was the step that was the stand in and since i said masturbation that's a perfect segue to the next photo Okay, so it's titled, You Can Do Better, Hong Kong. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with masturbation. So what it is, is uh, it's a photograph of you shooting down. And in it, it's, you know, this is, there's a theme that happens uh, on the podcast. Of, I think this might be the third or the fourth image of um, beach garbage. So it's, in this case, it's not so much plastic as it is styrofoam. Mm. So most of the garbage is white so bleach styrofoam there's a lot of bottles there's a lot of like water bottles and uh pakari sweat bottles there's like a yeah so i mean i don't know if you're if you're shooting down onto the a wall because it looks like there's brick but it's the rocks there's a bit of wood but most like i'd say 90 percent of it is just styrofoam so don't tell me let me guess. Yeah. You're a conservation, not a conservationist. You have a mind about protecting the oceans and our beaches. The third one, um, yeah, you have to if you pl- if it's your playground. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you don't want to be surfing amongst that stuff there that you're seeing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that this is cheating a little bit. This is after a mankad, I think. This is what washed oh, in. Oh, a big mankad, one. Which which really tends to wash in. A lot of stuff, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. as mentioned, four tables, light globes, and a lot of this nonsense yeah. washes in. But yeah, Tapman used to look like this, and I'm going to put myself out on a limb here. Every time we went out there, you know, going over the last 10 or 11 years, you could pick up a few bags of that. So right. the, the original guys who used to hide behind pillars and hide from, we'd grab a few bags and take Garbage, that in yeah, each yeah. time. Yeah. So, because it's was a place where you, you feel custodianship sure um, but that's come down less and I, I've got a hunch that a lot of that stuff I can't verify this but they used to do recycling and send it to different businesses and ship it to oh, China oh yeah yeah so I don't know how the money trail works but people would take it in sell it to someone in Hong Kong I'm pointing over to the island and then they would sell it to somebody that would take it to China and I'm pretty sure it just used to get out here and then just get thrown back in and get washed in. Oh, okay. So I don't know if someone already got the money uh-huh. f- from and then went, blow this, we're not going to recycle this stuff, we're just, just going to chuck it back yeah, in because yeah, yeah. we've already been paid to take it away. I don't okay. know. Have you ever heard uh, of that? I, I don't know enough about it actually. I, like, I know it's very complex. I, I just know that there's since China stopped taking plastic bottles and the plastic waste of Hong Kong, it's not there near as bad. Wow, wow. But then there's also another shift is that when I first used to pick this stuff up, 
a lot of local people would say, are you getting paid for that? Right. Are you selling that? Yeah. And I go, no, I'm just picking it up. Yeah. And I couldn't say it because I don't, but Chinese people that would say that on my behalf. But now I'm noticing gangs of younger people out there like sure. picking it up. Yeah. So something's shifted in the last 10 years. Yeah. It's, it's not a, and so it's looking more pristine around mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, yeah, for sure. It, I mean, I don't know how... See the little piggy out there, I think? This is so... Okay, so we're looking out. So we're having this conversation. Mm-hmm. We're looking out onto the water and about 100 meters... In, there's an exposed floor because the tide's out. We can see these two, it looks like two or one tiny, they're in silhouette because the, the light from the water is backlighting them. They look like, are they little pigs? Are they, it looks, they're far away. Yeah, I don't, I have no yeah, idea what that know. is. I know the other things are branches, but yeah, the tide's coming in, so it could be playing tricks on us, but it still looks lovely. Yeah. So all of this is mostly rock, exposed rock, but there is some sand. And on to the right, there's mangroves. I've just learned something about this. See how they've got yellow leaves? Uh-huh. They're the sacrifices. They're the ones that take the salt. Oh, um, okay. You know, one um, leaf on the mangrove, and I, I really admire them for that. I know they're not, I shouldn't be personifying them, but yeah, they're... The plant yeah, kind of the just plants, one of the leaves sacrifices to take the salt from the oh. from the um, the water they're taking in, oh, okay. and then drops off. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and I didn't I, know that. I've just learnt that recently. But I, I and they're great sequesters of carbon dioxide. Sure. Um, and another part of this is, I do take kids and anyone who's interested. They look like Christmas trees after typhoons because all the plastic gets stuck in the branches. Right, so right. it's nice taking people around to yeah. strip them off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for and, sure. And they're pretty clear at the moment. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, I lived at Sheko first here. And, you know, you read in the paper that the Hong Kong students top test scores. You know, right. The locals, whatever, the international schools. But you would watch the young people go down the Sheko beach mm-hmm. with their takeaway food and plastic bags yeah, and yeah, styrofoam, yeah. play cards plastic bottles, have a great rip-roaring day, have blow-up plastic rings and get up at the end of the day and just leave it all yeah, on the yeah, beach. Yeah. And it used to just be really sad. Sure. These are really bright people. Yeah. That, but I, I think that's shifting as well. I'm mm-hmm. talking 10 years ago. And, yeah, I'm glad that's shifting. Yeah. With this notion of... Every second is a gift, and it could all be, it could all just you know an accident can happen at any point. Boom, you're dead, or you have you run over by a car, or you tsunami happens, or whatever. So how do we make the most out of every day and every second, right? So in your case, you're clear that everything can sort of shape itself around so that you can get time out on the water. How how con- how much is that? by design and how much is that just happy accident I'm 60 it's been by design and it could end in the next three seconds I'd right. be fine with that yeah, because yeah. it's already happened I've had a good life but wait but hold on hold on you still have many years ahead of you I know that but but, but it, it's been good right yeah I don't know I know can you say that as well even the bad stuff sure has been good stuff sure yeah yeah for sure you even learned. your your the tuna- Sri yeah, Lanka yeah, must have yeah. been good stuff. Yeah, but, no. The, oh, except that. Except for the bad stuff. <laughs> except for the bad stuff. But but, but it obviously it shapes you and informs yeah. who you are. But it's more like talk about. Why don't you share a little bit about um, if you could impart to somebody else what that mindset could look like? What yeah. would you What would you say? It, sadly, it's about routines, you know, it's about, it's about something I've rejected most of my life is because I equate routines to be ruts, but those routines where you, a little trigger goes off and you, and I'm not trying to start another long bit, but yeah, it's about um, acting on those little triggers that go off in you and, and get, when it, they do go off at 4.30 in the morning or 5, get up and 
do something do mm. something about those mm. those little moments when something hits you and goes yeah oh, you want to skate down a hill really fast <laughs> you got to like turn yeah. that into a, turn that into a reality and yeah to react and to sort of know yourself well to what does you know we call it the green zone with the kitties mm. know your own green zone and mm. what gets you into that that green happy happy, right. happy zone yeah and and again it's about knowing yourself well what fires you up and um and and again i i can't stand money my wife deals with all the money but i think i've lived a whole life running this balance sheet in my mind of these things mm. even though i reject that whole idea of money and don't have any respect for it i've always run a balance sheet of what i'm throwing into me and what i'm pumping out of me and uh yeah run that balance sheet and and when those triggers get want you to act act on them and be really conscious of what does put you into that sort of that middle part of the seesaw Mm. and and you know run to either end of it and you know, enjoy it when that goes thud on the ground. Right. Then get yourself back into the middle of it, and um, yeah, and make sure every now and then someone gets on the other end, and you and and you get off so that they go down and mm. hit the ground really hard. Yeah, sure. Like that. <laughs> that too. So that would be fun. But yeah, know know your balance. Know, sure. Know your triggers. Know yourself. Uh, I just saw this thing from Ma- Malcolm Gladwell, who whose big uh, better advice at this point is. Um, have big projects, you know. Um, so, when you came to Hong Kong, were you already skateboarding down hillsides, or is that something you learned here? That that has to be done here because there's no surf every day. That no, but you learned that here, or no, you no, brought I've, it? I've used skateboarders transport all my life, but here it's become a substitute for um, not having surf in summer and and when because. Yeah, it doesn't have as frequent surf, so it's been a substitute. Right. Thing. Sorry. So, you, yeah. What? Get back to Malcolm. How, how he, he just said. He just said. You know, for a lot of people who want to succeed, it really helps to have large uh, projects. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, and some people say, "Oh, you're going to be bored retiring next year. You need projects." But yeah, but that those projects. Yeah, everyone must have them. You, mm-hmm. you have them. Sure. Well, this is <laughs> you, one of yeah, them. Yeah, I know you the and that yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, again, that's like acting on those triggers. Little trigger goes in your mind. Yeah. yeah. Buy a fluffy thing that's like whatever <laughs> that thing is, and and a sexy stand like that, and like and, and that, let's just go record a podcast yeah, episode. Just, sure. Just do it. Like a lot of people I know are sitting home thinking, oh, that's something I might do one day. Sure. And then they're then they're seventy eight. Yeah. You know, you just you, have to do it. Yeah, you got to get off your ass. And make things happen for yourself and if it involves projects but it's mostly involves you know you do the project because that's what puts you into your green zone or your balance zone right, that the right. projects do so right dean that's it man yeah, thank you thank you Rand. dude give me an elbow <laughs> Boom. awesome shooting it raw yes shooting it raw